Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another knife review for you today. And today we're going to be doing a special unboxing of the Chris Reeve Large Inkosi Inlay with Black Micarta Canvas Scales and a Draw Point Blade. So let's begin. As you guys know, the Chris Reeve unboxing is always uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, his packaging is always elegant as usual. Uh, when you open up the box, you get this folder. Inside the folder, there's a bunch of stuff. So let's take a look at some of that stuff real quickly. You get a registration card, Chris Reeve knives. He's out there in Boise, Idaho. You get a sticker, and these stickers have been known to change quite often. I guess this is the, the latest uh, incarnation of the sticker. Always kind of fun to have that. You get a information card on the knife, the knife that you got. It's called the Nkosi, the Chief, and it gives you some information there on how to uh, pretty much maintain your knife on the back so there you have it and finally the most important thing and fun thing uh, and not, it's a guarantee on the on the back of the card but more importantly this is the cards birth card and my my knife is actually only three weeks old so there you have it it's only about three weeks old my knife so let's put this stuff away Take a look at the knife a little bit. Also forgot to mention, it does come with some tools. You get three wrenches. We're gonna get in, into the tools in a minute. Uh, you also get some degreaser. Uh, a lot of people don't like the degreaser. I actually kind of like it. You just have to make sure you shake it up really good. Because if you don't, you're gonna wind up getting this white liquid stuff and then this big gigantic goop. Not a good thing. They also give you a little bit of Loctite there to Loctite your knife. And uh, you got your three wrenches, so we'll get into that in a minute. The most important item in the box is the actual knife itself. It's all wrapped up in its uh, beautiful microfiber cloth. I actually do the wrapping on this one. Uh, it didn't come this way. I did it this way. Maybe you guys might want to see how I do that. I just kind of like the way I do it better, even though it's probably a little over the top. But... Let's go ahead and put the box away. So here's the knife, microfiber cloth. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. Here it is, the Nkosi. Put that away. So basically, I'm gonna bring out two other knives and real quick so I can explain. The Nkosi is actually the third iteration of the Sebenza 21 which is this knife right here. In the 25th year, uh, Chris Reed decided to ask his buying public what improvements they would like to see being made to this Benz 21, what he could do to make it better. And so in the 25th year, he decided to go ahead and uh, put out some surveys and ask people suggestions. And he got back all the suggestions from the surveys pick the most common when he did that we get the Spence 25 not long after the survey was made the Spence 25 was discontinued uh, I'm gonna say probably within a couple of years they stopped making the Spence 25 they discontinued it it went away and then they came out with the Inkosi so just to make it clear, the original Sebenza 21, this is what I call the people's Sebenza 21 because this knife was made only by the suggestions of the knife buying public. And then we have the Nkosi. Now the Nkosi is kind of very important because it's a mixture of this knife and this knife melded together. They get the Nkosi. This one's very collectible strictly because this knife was made by us, by our suggestions alone. 
this is Chris Reeves Sabenza 21. And for collectability purposes, you have to have an Nkosi. So you can see why I put all three out. So this knife became this knife and transitioned into this knife. So let's go ahead and put these two away. Actually, we'll leave this so we can compare. So right off the bat, you can see there are very big differences between the Sabenza 21, right? And the uh, Chris Reeve and Kosi. First of all, one of the things by just by looking at it, you can see um, the scales are quite different. This one has two finger grooves. This one only has one. Something a lot of people seem to miss. I missed it. I didn't know. Uh, so this one makes a much more comfortable grip because of the two finger grooves on there versus just the one groove, but it's still a very comfortable knife no matter what. I think ergonomically it's fine, but I do have to admit it is not as comfortable as this knife. Secondly, let's take a look at some differences. First off the bat, two thumbs, thumb lugs are available on the Nkosi, only one on this Avenza 21. So that's one big main difference right there. Uh, you can see that right now. This is a righty version of the knife. And also, if we turn it over, take a look at the pocket clip structure on here. On the Sabenza 21, the pocket clip, which is the same pocket clip as on the Nkosi, on the Sabenza 21, the pocket clip is uh, right sitting right on the uh, lock bar. And on the Nkosi, the pocket clip is angled to act as a travel stop, although I don't really know why if we take a look at both knives you can see that the scales are much thicker on the uh Nkosi than it is on the 21 uh much thicker but yet that's where they angle the pocket clip on the knife where the titanium scale is even thicker than on the on the 21 and i really don't see how it's possible to push that knife over i mean even over time, your, your, your hand is going to automatically know when to stop, right? I mean, I, I just don't see anybody wanting to do that or why they would want to do that. So anyway, there you have that. Uh, another difference on the knife is the uh, backspacer um, pivots on there. Now, on the Sabenza 21, it's kind of a dual thing. You put one... Uh, wrench in there, another wrench in there to take it apart. People complained about that. Uh, so they they decided to just make that a countersunk point and all you gotta do is just undo this. It doesn't make sense to me and because they, they brought that concept back in another place that they shouldn't have. I'll explain in a second. So, from looking at both knives, uh, the scales are quite thicker, but also another difference is deployment. Very important. While the Spencer 21 is quite smooth, it does take some time to break the knife in and get it to the smoothness that you prefer. I know it had to be that way for me. I'm sure for a lot of you guys who own the Spencer 21, it was the same process for you. The reason that is, is because of the uh, washer system installed on the Spence 21. It's quite unique. On the front side of the Sabenz 21, we have a normal size washer, and on the back, the washer is smaller to accommodate the small, the lock bar, and to uh, make it fit inside the small little area they actually made that washer smaller. Um, on the Sabenza 25, they corrected that. Uh, they made both washers the same size and made the pivot slightly larger. But as you can guess, with the success of the Sabenza 25 and the improvements they made on the Sabenza 25, for the third iteration, he decided to make the pivot bushing even larger with even bigger washers. So if you take a good quick look at the knife... Check out those washers. You don't even have to put it up close to the camera to see. The, you can actually see the washers are almost sticking outside of the knife there. They are absolutely huge. And the concept behind that is more surface area. So you will now be able to deploy it much easier. And I got to tell you guys, this knife is ridiculously smooth, as you can see. I didn't want to make it fall shut, but it can fall shut because I don't want to hit, hit my iPhone here. But... 
Yeah, I can't do it because I'm, I'm afraid it's going to hit the camera. But yeah, it will fall shut, and it doesn't take that long of a break-in period. In fact, it was already smooth when I got it. Uh, really, really fantastic action on this. Uh, a lot of people complained about the thumb studs, saying that they are just, that dome shape doesn't work. But for me, basically, I use my thumbnail, I stick my thumb right underneath there, and pull. That's simple. Uh, you can even middle finger flick this knife. It's really not a problem. You get used to doing that as well. I really believe when it comes to deploying a knife and finger flicking, uh, your hand will find a way. You're a knife person. You're just naturally going to figure out a way to do it. And that's what I did. So... Another difference on the knife also are the scales. Really different kind of scales. Now obviously on this I got the wood inlays and on the Nkosi uh, it came with the micarta inlays. You can get all kinds of iterations of uh, inlays on the, on the Sabenz 21 but on uh, the Nkosi all you can get is micarta. It comes in two colors. Uh, the natural brown micarta inlay and this black micarta inlay. Um, another interesting thought is that a lot of people didn't like the scales on the Sabenza 25. They thought that the uh, micarta inlays were ugly. I don't think they're ugly. I think they're unique, maybe a little bit rough, but I don't think they're. I certainly don't think they're ugly. Uh, and then you know, so he made them look a lot nicer on this on this knife here. So another difference between both knives is the jimping. Take a look at the jimping on that. Much more rougher jimping on the knife there than it is on uh, on the 21. 21 is a little bit more elegant looking, whereas on the uh, Nkosi, it's much more aggressive. And speaking of which, well, let's take a good quick look at the blades. The Nkosi is an eighth thicker than the original Spence 21. So, uh, and the scales are thicker too, and you can feel it when you put it in your hand. Really fills your hand, especially with the micarta inlays. It's just absolutely perfect grip on that. Really very, very nice. So let's go ahead and get through some uh, size comparisons. As you guys can see, this is a very, very large knife. Uh, the blade for this knife is uh, 3.6 inches. So let's bring out a knife that it's constantly being compared to. How about the Spyderco Switch Bowie? I actually carry this knife in my pocket when I feel like I want to have a medium-sized Sabenza because there is no medium-sized Sabenza. I don't know why, but he should have had one. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have bought this, but, you know, whatever. Here's the um, original Sabenza 21, or not the original, but the Sabenza 21 up against the Nkosi. The uh, in coast the Sabenza 21 is only a 2.78 inch blade, so that's just under three inches. And once again, the uh, in coast is 3.6. Finally, let's go ahead and put it up against the ZT 393, 3.5 inches. So it's a big knife overall. Uh, and for some fun, how about an object that everybody uses? How about a spoon? <laughs> there you go. So it's it's a really big knife. Um, to have in your pocket. You may live in areas where uh, carrying a knife this large is not legal, so you want to be careful of that. Lots of differences in these two knives. Another thing, too, is the lanyard on it. Lanyard location on the lanyard on the Spence 21. They actually dedicated a special pin slot just to put the lanyard, which I always... You know, I do like it, but I just didn't like its location. Reason being is that, check that out, the knife is so close to the lanyard, it might actually rip the lanyard off. They probably would have been better if they put this screw here and put this screw here and take this screw and put it over there. That would have been a lot better situation to keep that thing from ripping up your lanyard that you just bought. But I haven't had a problem with it yet, so. Uh, but I, I do think that the location of it could be a little bit better. Um, most importantly, too, I wanted to mention, I know this video is running long, but I'm going to mention it anyway. The blade shapes are quite different. On the Nkosi, it's much fatter, and on the uh, Sabenza 21, it's a little bit thinner. So let me explain. Basically, the Sabenza 21 is an all-around purpose knife, okay? You can do anything you want to do with this knife, but it is accentuated uh, to be a slicer. 
as you can see, it's got that super deep hollow grind in there. Uh, this thing will go through very many boxes before you even have to worry about sharpening it. Sharpening it. In fact, I haven't sharpened mine yet, and it's been through quite a few boxes already. I just wiped down my knife for the camera. So, and of course, the Inkosi is a slicer, but it's accentuated as a workhorse of a knife. You can take a look at the blade on that. It is much, much fatter, uh, and the grind is not that deep. Uh, also, the look of the drop point blades are quite different. On the Spence 21, it's a satin finish, and on the uh, Inkosi, it's a stone wash finish, so I want to keep that in mind. So, I mean, right off the bat, both knives look different. I would probably wear, carry this knife if I'm, like, going to work because I'm, you know, working in an office, so I would probably carry this in my pocket on those days where I have to wear uh, casual, you know, where I have to wear, like, dress pants and a dry shirt. I'll carry this. This knife, you can see yourself wearing this with jeans. You know, I kind of like that idea. You know, two knives, same knife almost, but, you know, I mean, makes it more dressier, so I like that idea. Overall, the feeling of the of, of the uh, Nkosi is, it just fills your hand really well. It also makes a really good slicer. Uh, I love the, the round crown top that uh, Chris Reed is so famous for on all of his knives, uh, including the uh, original stuff. I mean, the, the crowning, I think that's probably what really attracts me to this knife is the way he detailed that. Uh, that is a Chris Reeve original, I, in my opinion. I might be wrong with that. But as you can see on the Spyderco Switchboard, they did the same thing. But it stops at a certain point and becomes flat. Maybe they were worried about copyright infringement, I don't know. But on the Spence 21, it's, it, is a, it is just a, a regular everyday um, thing that he does with all of his knives except for the um, numbs on. One thing I don't understand is this dimple here. I'm assuming maybe it's supposed to stop your thumb, giving you a, a, an idea that that's where the, you should have your, your thumb when you grip it. It doesn't have to go that far up. I don't know. But that I don't know what that's for. A lot of people don't even know what that's for. It was a design choice. Whatever. We don't get it, but you know, it's a Chris Root thing, so you do it, and you take it the way it is. Um, so there you have it, guys. The Inkosi Black Micarta Inlay. Really absolutely gorgeous knife, made in the USA, right there in Idaho. By Chris Reeve and his, I believe, 44 employees. Uh, Chris Reeve Knives... The attention to detail, the second to none. Uh, his warranty is second to none. Imagine people out there that only own one knife of his. I mean, I have them because I'm crazy, but I'm not really, but I'm, I'm a collector, so I gotta have everything, right? But most people, when they get a Sabenza, they just get the one knife knowing fully that Chris Reeve will service that knife and keep it in the best condition possible for the rest of their lives. So for a short fee of 19 bucks, uh, I, that's, at least that's what I paid to have my Sabenz 21 serviced. That's another story I don't want to talk about. Uh, but basically they fixed my knife, they, they cleaned it up and made it look absolutely brand new. Uh, you know, on when I, when I got it back, it got, I got it back completely brand new. The only thing that they won't do on the knife is re-anodize the, uh, the thumb lugs because they do come in two colors i believe they come in gold and blue and uh if they wear out they wear out very quickly but to get that replaced is 35 bucks so i suggest if you're going to get a sabenzum just make sure you get the regular silver so you don't have to worry about that a lot of people have said that um any comments thoughts or questions please let me know i want to hear from you guys if you own this knife or if you uh, have this knife, or if you're thinking about buying this knife, do you think it's overpriced? Uh, do you think it's worth the money? Whatever. Give me your comments below. I would love to hear from you. Uh, again, this is the Chris Reeve and Kosi, the third iteration of the Sabenza 21. 
Hope this has been educational for you. I hope I didn't run too long. But this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. Hoping you'll find happiness in your next piece of sharp art. I hope to see hear from you guys. Uh, leave your comments and questions below. Thanks again for watching. And you guys have a fantastic day.